Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I want to take a look at some of my favorite map making tools. Now, this demo got a little long, so what I'm going to do is break it into two. In this video, I'm going to deal with the two tools that I like to use to make world and regional maps. And then in part two, I'm going to deal with the tools that I use to do my town maps and my dungeon crawl maps. So without further ado, let's roll it. My favorite map making tool for world maps has got to be without a doubt Wonderdraft. This is an application that is a one time purchase. It costs $29.99 and it runs on Mac, Windows and Linux. So that's a real big plus. I really enjoy the output that you get from Wonderdraft and the dynamic realism that you can create in making coastlines and whatnot. So let's take a look. So here's the base Wonderdraft layout. I have the assets enlarged a little bit to work on the screen. I have my screen resolution currently set for 1920 by 1080 full HD. Everything feels a little bit more cramped in this demo than it is when I'm actually using the application. Uh, Wonderdraft is a one-time purchase. It is $29.99 forever, at least until there is a major update that really warrants having an upgrade price. So it's more of an old school type application. You can make very realistic maps with it. Uh, one of the coolest things I'm going to show you in a little bit, which is the raise and lower the landmass area, which can kind of give it this fractalized border around the coastlines, which is really, really helpful. The neat thing about Wonderdraft is that there are themes that you can switch to on the fly. So you have all these different things that you can change, and I'm currently in the adventure theme. But if we go to, let's say, pastel and apply it, I'm now going to have a dark blue background for the water. So this is the ocean color right now. And actually, let's keep that because it's a nice contrast. The adventure theme is good for kind of old school feeling papery maps like you would have in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings book, that sort of thing. You can create land masses via a template and it'll kind of do a seed for you. I don't tend to do that with Wonderdraft for whatever reason, but it actually is pretty helpful. So this is your wizard right here. And I can say I want a uniform pattern or if I want continent or uh, archipelago, I can never pronounce that word, an atoll, do a world or equal rectangular, all those types of things you can do. And if you generate, see there's my nice uniform. So I basically have either two land masses with a bay or a massive river in the, in the middle, depending on my scale. Or I can go through and I say I want to do a continent and we'll generate that. And there's a nice continent. Now I can change the water level or I can increase it. I can increase or decrease the roughness. And all this is going to change the way that the system actually works. And you can hide the side to get more view. So that's really kind of cool. But what if I want to have like another landmass over here? Well, here's your landmass brush, and I can just paint. And that looks really good, right? Let's go here. See, doesn't that look, don't, don't those two landmasses look like they belong together? This is one of the really cool things about Wonderdraft. Here's a raise landmass tool and a lower landmass tool. So I want to break up the coastline a little bit. And you can change the size of the brushes over here and you can use your bracket keys the square bracket keys to make them go up and down uh, and you can change your roughness so if i want to go like this and you do have to move a little slow to have things really keep up with you see how it's giving it a much more fractalized uh, view or look and that's really nice Again, you move a little slower, especially when you're zoomed in. You can see how it kind of moves a little bit slower. Or if I want to raise the landmass, it'll do the same thing. Let's see, I want to make that a really bigger. And depending on how rough you want it, see if I make this really rough, it's going to be much more processor intensive. You're creating little harbors and bays. You're giving it a much more weathered look. So it feels like it's a, it's a much more natural environment. 
really fast, uh, really quick, and the results are absolutely stunning. And the, I love how the themes work in. And again, you can change your theme at will. So here's adventure. Let's turn it to worn. Uh, or we can go to. Or no, that was that was actually not adventure. That was pastel. We can go to paper. So that's a nice paper image, like you would get in. Tolkien. We can go to Imagination. So, you know, you have really nice options here. I really like the pastel. It's one of my favorite. The other thing that you do with Wonder Draft then is you, you can paint on your terrain. Uh, that would create your different biomes. So, if I want to go, let's go to land and go to the paint tool. So here's your colors. And I can actually choose my own colors if I want. So say I want a you know a good green to show that it's a plentiful area with water. And uh, you can change also the opacity and the brush velocity. So if I want to change the opacity down so it's not just painting green on top. See I can go like this. So here's a nice plain is very nice. Uh, feels like I should have a mountain range going like this, probably. So maybe we have a desert down here. And I'm not putting any symbols in yet. I'm just putting in the biome. So I'm going to paint where the mountains might go. I'll hop down there a little bit. This can be a coastal plain here. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more tundra-y up here. Not quite arctic, but also a little drier just because it's it's cooler. Like that. There we go. I won't touch this other one right now. But then you can go in and do your symbols. And you can put in mountains and whatnot. And uh, you can, obviously, we want to shrink that. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of different mountains, and they do it does randomize. So if I go like this, and I can change the size as I go. So in the middle of the island, they're bigger. Mouse key or mouse wheel down to go a little bit smaller. I want to put some hills on the edges here. Go with some hills. There we go. You see how fast that actually manages to work? It's very nice. In Wondergraph, rivers are essentially paths, so it's very, very nice. So I'm going to put a river path in here. And we're going to say river source fade in. So rivers usually fade from the mountains. You can also, when you're doing your river path, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll through and it's going to change the way that it bends around the environment until you get to the end. So there's a nice river coming down. It's a little narrower up here. It gets broad, so this will be a navigable river. We want to put in a lake. So that's a pre-done lake. Sometimes these can be a little bit difficult. Uh, one of the things that I find is, where's the freshwater? There's the freshwater brush. Is to just do a freshwater brush for lakes. It tends to work better. So a nice lake up here coming out of the mountains. You can throw some small hills to kind of show how the the river is flowing around the environment. So let's zoom in here and make these smaller. See how it takes the color of the environment behind it that's really kind of cool and there's a whole bunch of symbols so you have symbols for settlements and cities and farms and all that you have trees so if I want to put say a forest here nice small trees make that a forest Pretty cool. Another forest up here. 
Again, it's starting to get a little cooler up there, so it's not that. So real quick, just a nice small little continent. I have a river, I have uh, a lake, I have places where you know a good human settlement probably be right there. Maybe there's a mining town somewhere along this lake. Uh, probably somebody settled down here. So real fast, real good. And the results are excellent. A tool that I've often looked at but only picked up rather recently is Incarnate. Now this got its start as a world and regional map making tool, but it has expanded and now does things that Wonderdraft doesn't. Town and even dungeon crawl maps or battle maps. So there's a lot going for Incarnate. It is a web application. I find that it runs best in the Chrome browser. And there is a free version that's limited in what you can use your output for, so you can't do commercial projects with the free version of Incarnate. And your list of stamps is kind of limited at that point as well. The pro version is really not all that much. It's $25 for a year. That gets you access to all the stamps that they currently have in the system. It gets you early access to newer features and uh, you're allowed to use your output for commercial projects. So that's pretty cool. Right now, let's take a look at Incarnate's world and regional map building tools. So I'm gonna choose a style here. So I'm going to fantasy world. And uh, why don't we do this? Now I do not currently have any uh, land masses on it. And you have it to start here, you have a mask option. So a mask is essentially how you're creating your, your land mass. Uh, everything right now is water. So I want to be adding land. And this is a with a uneven edges. So it's going to give that fractalization look. The way that when we were in Wonder Draft, we could raise and lower the coastline. This does this automatically. It does not give quite the same look as wonder draft does uh, but it's very ac acceptable and, and it works really fast and i th find the results rather pleasing and you see how you, when you're painting it it looks one way and then it rasterizes it another way you can subtract as well create a nice little bay there it's so it moves really fast, and, and I really appreciate it. Very much similar to Wonder Draft, you can paint textures. So you can add a catalog here. There are a bunch that are built in already. So you're not just painting on colors. There are actually textures that are going on. Uh, so if I want to do a nice plane for some grass, see how bold that is? But if I want to kind of fade in somewhere else, you can paint this way. I do kind of want to do a coastal plane. So we'll just put that there. Let's increase the opacity a little bit. So it's not quite as green, but it's very nice looking. We can go around the whole edge like that. Then you can go to symbols, much as you can do in Wonder Draft. It's alternating the look of the mountain, so you're getting a much natu more natural feel. So I have a nice spine on this environment, this little island here. Now there are other tools out there to create your world and your regional maps. I think Hexographer or Worldographer does a great job creating old school hex maps like you would find in the Isle of Dread or the known world maps that led to Mistara or even the original Greyhawk map. So if that's a look you're going for, that might be something worth checking out. You can also buy brush and stamp sets to use in things like Photoshop or Affinity Photo and create your own maps in those applications. That's really kind of nice because you can create it on your iPad or on your desktop machine and go back and forth. I used to do that, in fact, but I really have migrated over to the more dedicated maps. It less work and creates better output. Whatever you're using, however, even if it's just you drawing on pencil on a piece of paper, if you can create a world in which your players have fun, that really is the goal. So just do it and enjoy. When I get done this series, I'm going to start talking about some of the lessons I've learned about encouraging role-playing at my tables. Until then, happy playing, everyone. <laughs>